personal finance practice problem using OneNote, home loan payment calculation, and amortization table. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Here we are in OneNote. If you have access to OneNote, would like to follow along. You're not required to, but if would like to, we're in the icon on the left-hand side. We're in the Practice Problems tab. Down in the 1250 Home Loan Payment Calculation and Amortization Table tab. Also note, when using OneNote, look at the Immersive Reader tool. Our presentations will also be in the text area with the same name, same number, but with transcripts. Transcripts that can be translated into multiple different languages and either listened to or read in them. Closing the icon, we got our information up top, calculations on down below. We want to go through that loan, home loan calculation. Similar process for other types of financing when you're talking about personal financing, such as for a car or for any kind of big type of equipment that you might be purchasing for personal use. Typically, when you're thinking about the loan structure, It'll be broken out into what they're looking at are the standardized payments that will be put in place. And then in order to get those standardized payments, which are usually payments per month, there's going to be a difference between the principal and interest portion of the payment that you are making. And that's kind of the pros and cons of the standard payment. Now, obviously, the first thing you want to think about is what is going to be the payment, what's going to be the monthly payment, because that's how you're going to directly look at your budget. But that's clearly not all you want to take a look at. And when you're talking to a finance professional, if they're or someone, especially when you're working with with like a, a department that's basically trying to give you financing options, you want to make sure that you've kind of thought about this before going into that situation. Because if they're only thinking about the payment, then they're they're leaving out important factors. Because clearly, I want to know how much we're going to be paying in terms of the interest, which is kind of like the rent on the financing options and I want to make sure that you know we're doing we're doing a reasonable payment according to the to the market for that portion of it it's not just simply about uh, the payment so you'd like to be able to set something like this up yourself so that you can do your own calculations and then when you go into the actual negotiation process you already have a very good idea of what's going on once you know what the payment is then you can start to think about you know um once you know what the payment is, you can put together the amortization table. And the amortization table, really useful because that helps you to visualize what's going to be the breakout of the interest and the principal on your payments. And if interest is deductible, as it oftentimes is for something like a home loan, then you want to see how much the interest portion will be on a year-to-year -year basis so that you can then start making projections from a tax standpoint. If you're doing something large like a home that could have significant tax implications, which we won't go into a lot of detail here, but you want to get a good understanding of that because the interplay between like itemized deductions and standard deductions is somewhat complex. And so to the actual benefit that you're getting uh, is can be somewhat complex and, and it could change from year to year because of course your interest, as we'll see, will actually change from year to year, even though your payment will be the same if you have a fixed loan. So our information, we got the loan 200,000. Now, if we, there was a home purchase, whatever the home purchase is, we're imagining we put money down and then we're gonna finance a certain part of the of it. That's gonna be the 200,000, just the loan component. We got the interest rate, which we're just gonna assume at 5%. We're gonna assume it's a 30 year fixed loan and then consider what the payments will be. Now, this is something that when we look at the payment calculation, it's similar to our present value, future value formulas but we're just going to use the payment function in Excel. If you're doing this in practice, you will typically use the payment function in Excel, and then you'll break out your table down below so that you can use that payment function to, to get your amortization table broken out. So it's related to the present value, future value calculations. Notice that although we, we're usually given the rate in yearly terms, 5% per year, that the loan, of course, is typically in a monthly format. And therefore, when we do our calculations, we got to make sure that we're tying out the percent properly to the to the loan amount when we do like our amortization table and our payment calculation. Now, if we have a 30 year loan, then if we multiply that times 12 months, we have 360 payments, which can be quite overwhelming when we're thinking about our table that we're going to be putting together. But even with 360 periods, we can do that fairly easily using Excel. We do do this in Excel if you want to take a look at it 
there as well. Next thing we'll take a look is the payment calculation. And this is really useful if you're going to be doing kind of scenarios. You're kind of thinking, okay, what if I start the 200,000 loan? What if I had a 5% 30-year loan? And then you can start saying, well, what if I you know, have a different option, different financing? And what if I had $150,000 loan? What if the rate went up to 6% or down to 4% and so on? It would be very nice if you did this in an Excel worksheet with a formula down here, which can help you to calculate that payment for you. Note, there's also a lot of tools online that will help you do a calculation like this as well, but they are only gonna give you the payment calculation and that's really the only the first step. What you'd like to do is get the payment calculation and then use that to populate all being connected together in, in an Excel worksheet, your, your table down below so that you can get an amortization table so that you can then figure out the interest that you'd be paying per year, think about what kind of tax implications might be on that. So. It, it's really useful to be able to do this in, in an Excel worksheet. And no matter what method you do, you clearly want to be being able to do it yourself or with someone you trust, someone that you're not, that you're not paying or that doesn't have an invested interest in you taking action so that you can get an unbiased opinion and work on it yourself and then, and then go in with a good understanding of what you feel is, is you know, right. So then, so that's going to be your payment calculation here. So the payment calculation is going to be equal to negative uh, payment. I put the negative in front of the P so that the result will be a positive number. You could put it in front of the present value if you so choose. And then we're going to say brackets. The rate is going to be the 5%, but that's the yearly rate. So we're going to take 5% divided by 12, as you can see in the actual formula. That's going to come up with something less than one for the monthly rate because the rate uh, time frame has to match the period time frame, which is going to be monthly. Note that if you're pulling this information from your data up top in this format, it's not a problem that the monthly rate is a messy decimal rate because you could just put it in there in the format of a fraction. Then we're going to say comma, the number of periods. The number of periods is not going to be 30 years, but 30 times 12 because they're monthly periods or 360 as has been referenced here. This is referencing that 360. And then the present value is going to be the loan amount, which will be then the 200000 That would give us, in this case, about, there may be rounding, 1074 on the payments. Then, of course, we can use this amount to, to kind of figure out our budgeting information. And after you set this up, you can, of course, change your data up top and run different scenarios and get your different results here. Then we can take that payment and plug it into our amortization table, which gives us a really much better visualization and feel for what's going on once we get over the overwhelming no nature of the fact that this table is going to be very long. But if we go down, we're going to say, okay, if we if we put this in Excel, we could do, we could build this fairly easily. Again, you can see it's it's quite long here. I'm going to go down to 360 periods. So we're going to list all the periods. This goes all the way down to 360, but we can just copy it down so we can do that in a matter of seconds because we've got the power of Excel. Why can we do it? Because Excel will, and any other spreadsheet form will probably do it too as well. So then we're going to start off, we're going to say our loan balance at period zero is the 200,000. And then we can calculate what the payment's going to be. Now we already calculated the payment. That's going to be up here. That's going to be the 1,074. Now this table, you can have it connecting or pulling from this cell up top so that your amortization table will automatically populate when you make adjustments to say the loan balance or the rate. And then we can take the interest calculation, the interest calculation being the, pulling the trustee calculator, we're gonna say it's gonna be the 200,000 times the 0.05, but that would be the yearly rate divided by 12, monthly would be the 833, which we can also get to by taking the 0.05, 5% divided by 12, giving us the monthly rate, which is quite small, ugly, decimal number, but that's why we use the, the yearly percents, right? And then and then we break it down to get to the, our calculations. Then we can take that times the 200, and we get, once again, the 833. The loan reduction then, because this payment represents the total payment, and the interest portion of it is the 833. Therefore, the difference between the two, the 1074 minus the about 833 gives us the 241 about. So the loan's going to be reduced by that 241. So the 200 
thousand minus the two forty about is going to give us the one nine nine seven sixty one nine nine seven sixty. So note, of course, the interest is kind of like the rent on on the loan. You're not getting the interest back. The amount of the payment that you're making that's going to principal is going to reduce basically the loan that that's going to be going out there. The payment will remain the same, but now the principal has been reduced. In order to make the payment the same when the principal has gone down, then you're going to have a change in the interest and you're going to have a change in the reduction in the loan. Because we're doing a monthly payroll period and we're talking 360 periods, that change is, is not seen too extremely in the first couple payments. You only see that dollar difference. But when you get to the end of the loan, that distant, that difference will start to become substantial and can become substantial from year to year. It doesn't affect your budget so much in that you still have the 1074 that you're paying either way, whether it's going to interest or to the principal. But if the interest is deductible, then it can have another impact in terms of cash flow on your taxes with a home loan, then that may be deductible. And if you're talking about like a business loan where you're financing equipment or something like that, then you could have a similar situation where that you have an added tax kind of concern or implication. So we're going to take that times the 0.05, and that would be for a year divided by 12. That'll give us the one, the 832, which we can also calculate by taking the 0.05 yearly rate divided by 12 to get the monthly rate times the 199760, giving us the 832 again. The difference between the payment, the 1074 minus the 832, gives us the 241 or 242 about we can then take the 199760 minus the 241, giving us the new balance of the 199518 or 519 about. Let's do this a couple more times. The payment will remain the same. We got the interest now being calculated at the 199518 times the 0.05. That would be the yearly amount divided by 12 for the monthly amount, which would be the 831. 831 can also be calculated by taking the 0.05 divided by 12, and that would be the monthly rate times the 199518. We get the 831 once again. The difference between the payment and that 831 would be then the 1074 minus the 831 or the 242, 243 about and then we can take the 199518 minus the 242 is going to give us the ending result of the 199274 and you can see this gradual change here which will become substantial over time let's do it one more time we won't do it 360 times but one more time i think we can we could do it one more time so let's do it one more time so we're going to take then the 199276 times the 0.05 that's going to give us the yearly amount divided by 12 gives us the monthly amount which is going to be now the 830 then we can take the full payment, the full payment of the 1074 minus the 830, giving us the 244 about. Then we can take the 199276 minus the 243, gives us the 199033. Now, of course, if we did this all the way down, I'm just going to delete these all the way down. The payments will remain the same all the way down. The interest, you can see, is going down as we go. And the, and the reduction in the principal then is going up, which if we get to the later part of the loan, way down here, starts to become more and more substantial. And obviously, if we get all the way to the bottom, then most of the payment that we are making is now not going to interest, but to reduction of principal, which has a much different tax impact. So when you're down here, you got a much different tax impact, even though you have the same payment than when you were up top. Also, so that means that as the interest kind of changes over time and you do your tax calculations, it's kind of confusing because one, the tax code can change over time. And two, your, your interest each year is going to change. So if you're, if you're talking to someone that, you know, you can't just say, well, my first year's interest deduction that I may get, you know, is going to be the same that I'm going to get for the next 30 years or the rest of my life or something like that. Because even if you have the same loan with the same payments, it's going to change over time. So, so to really, you know, you got to think a little bit longer out to really get an idea of if you're taking that into consideration. So you can kind of add up the interest. So if I added up the interest, say for the first year, which would be easier to do in Excel, because you can just kind of sum it up. 
but you could say all right the interest is for 12 months so it would be this column down to here which would be the the 833 plus 832 plus 831 plus 830 plus 829 plus 828 plus 827 plus 826 plus 8 825 plus 824 plus 823 plus 822 gives us about 9939930 on the interest. And that interest portion is the portion that may possibly have tax implications. If I did that same thing for year two, then notice I have a, I have a different kind of interest number. And the further out into the future, the lower that interest number would go. And clearly, this is a long-term decision that you want to, so you want to take a look if you're considering tax impacts as part of your decision-making process, which probably can be significant, then you want to make sure that you're, you're thinking about it more, you know, into the future. And you got it. And the only way to do that is to get a little bit more nuanced look on the amortization table, the interest that's going to happen from year to year. And then you can look at property taxes and this whole thing for a more you know, thought out decision, which is usually something that you, of course, want to do on those big purchase items, such as a new home or a new car or a big piece of equipment or something like that.